today, I am asking our chairman to proceed with the articles of impeachment. Pelosi also dispensing with some of her other reticence and today dubbing Donald Trump a coward when it comes to this process and saying there's really, quote, no choice other than impeaching him given the mountain of evidence against him. The facts of the Ukraine situation have just changed everything. The Ukraine was the, um, the vehicle of the president's action. This isn't about Ukraine. This is about Russia, who benefited by our withholding withholding uh, of that military assistance. Russia, all roads lead to Putin. Understand that. And so that was the aha moment. The aha moment. Think about what we're witnessing right there, because the speaker has moved so methodically. She didn't rush to impeachment. Everyone knows that. And she is not letting only the report or the evidence make the case. The report is the foundation. And ultimately, any article of impeachment needs elements, not unlike, although not the same as, a criminal process. But Speaker Pelosi going broader, saying it's not just Ukraine, it's Russia. It's not just abuse of power or bribery. It's national security. It is, she says, a matter of national import, whether we maintain a democracy. She made this point saying that if the Congress does not impeach on this evidence, well, Maybe impeachment shouldn't even be in the Constitution anymore. So that's where the speaker is. What else is happening? Well, we have other news for you. New today, the House Judiciary Committee has announced its second committee hearing. Judiciary Chairman Nadler working on drafting articles of impeachment and an evidence hearing on Monday. They will have a lot of witnesses that are of interest, given that they're coming from the Intelligence Committee, those lawyers. So then we'll see the scope, the size, and what any articles that are now being literally written tonight. That's something I couldn't have told you last night for sure. They're writing them. What will they say? Will they deal with this as narrow or broad, as an abuse of power or as bribery? And what will they do with a witness who also may be a co-conspirator? Of course, I'm talking about Rudy Giuliani. Where is he? Well, he's in Ukraine today, of all places. He says he's meeting with prosecutors, which are, of course, also potential witnesses in all of this. And he's continuing to talk up the conspiracy theories around the Bidens. You're looking at him with a Ukrainian lawmaker. Those photos were posted today. We have them via Reuters. They're undated but they were newly posted, a reporter with him also putting out separate photos of him sitting down for an interview with the former prosecutor general of Ukraine, Lutsenko. Giuliani also says that he's filming a series on the pro-Trump um, uh, One America News Network. I want to tell you about this. We looked into it. We found one promotional video, which also shows a former Ukrainian official and the D.C. issues and all of them at a table here. Uh, with Giuliani. That's basically what they do. That's You're looking at that on a loop. And that's the OAN part of whatever this plot is. So you have all of that. And then you have these looming questions tonight of what's the response to all this and who's going to make it, given that the Trump administration has been boycotting the impeachment proceedings. And that brings me to the final thing I want to tell you before we go to our guests. Take a deep breath. Who's going to show up and defend the president on this plot? Well, no one in Washington today, but his personal attorney, Rudy Giuliani, Newly live tweeting a defense of the president from Ukraine. I want to bring in Congressman Eric Swalwell, who serves on the Judiciary Intelligence Committee, the Roots Jason Johnson, and conservative Bill Crystal, director of the group Defending Democracies Together. Good evening, all. Uh, Congressman, there is the serious, uh, there is the heavy, uh, there is the Baroque, and there is the bizarre. Uh, and what I went through, I think, covers a bunch of it right now. Uh, your view of what it means to your committees uh, and to the Congress to have the president's lawyer who's at the center of this plot doing those meetings today and, and literally live tweeting a defense from Ukraine. Rudy Giuliani being in Ukraine shows that this is a crime spree in progress and that gives us an urgency to act. And to anyone who asks, are you moving too quickly? I say the president's lawyer is moving quickly to continue to ask a foreign government to cheat our elections and doing nothing is completely uh, off the table. We have to secure our elections. We have powerful, uncontradicted evidence now, and now is the time to hold the president accountable and determine just which impeachment articles we should proceed with. Take a look at uh, part of what Giuliani is posting. It's a farce. Uh, evidence will be released very soon, he says, that supports his views. Uh, interesting that he brings up evidence, since uh, you, uh, you well know he's been withholding, participating, and providing evidence with your committees. Um, I, I got to tell you, Congressman, I spoke to uh, a very seasoned uh, attorney today uh, who said that it looks like potential witness tampering to have him over there talking to these people that are uh, uh, subjects of your probe. 
Well, we have seen from this president uh, witness tampering, uh, jury uh, tampering, uh, intimidation of witnesses. And so it's not surprising at all. But what we have to focus on, Ari, is that Rudy Giuliani is Donald Trump and Donald Trump is Rudy Giuliani. The president can throw many other people under the bus and distance himself uh, from them. He can't do that with Rudy Giuliani. We have evidence in the Intelligence Committee report that the president told anyone who was working on Ukraine, Rudy is my guy on Ukraine, mm. and that Rudy Giuliani has represented the people that he is the president's person on Ukraine. So they're inseparable. And so if Rudy is to be held to account, that means the president has to be held to account. Jason. Well, yeah, you can't say that the left hand doesn't know what the right hand is doing. And, and, I, and I think the, the critical thing here, if we look at the sort of stepping back, Nancy Pelosi said something really fascinating today when she, she said, you know, we're going through with impeachment. She was adamant about this not being political, this not being partisan. This is not about 2020 from the standpoint of switching the polls or, or getting undecided voters. It's about 2020 from the standpoint of election integrity, that if you have a president who has established that he will try to cheat and that he has solicited the assistance from other people, if we don't hold him accountable for trying to disrupt the actual process, then we can't move forward. So I, I'm, I'm pleased to see that we finally reached this point where, look, arrest the president. We got the evidence. I'm glad that Nancy Pelosi has gone that far. What's going to be fascinating is the writing now of these impeachment articles, how long that process will take, what it will look like. And we might see a preview of that, at least some of those conversations happening on Monday. Bill, uh, joining me here on set, I'm tempted uh, to try to do something that would help people see how today is not like yesterday, how Giuliani's trip is so brazen and beyond that we do struggle for words. Should we throw a, a mug off the set? Should we swear? Should we do something to say uh, that the brazenness of what we just showed in the top is in itself its own new incredible development? No, I think it is. I mean, Jason's point is, is interesting. Speaker Pelosi went out of her way today in answering a question to say, look, I disagree with Donald Trump, and I really f strongly disagree with him and dislike what he has done in a lot of areas, as she mentioned, DACA and immigration, climate change. But she said, those are for 2020. That's to be resolved in an election. Right. But this is about the Constitution and the oath you take. And it's about the 2020 election, which Trump clearly had an interest in having a foreign government effect by, by announcing an investigation. If there wasn't a real one and a real cause for one uh, of the Biden family. So that I think really does folk. I hope that she and others stay on this theme. They need to focus people on why the impeachment is both just, why he has done things that deserve impeachment, and why it's necessary and urgent. And I do think Giuliani being over there, it's so wacky that you almost want to laugh about it and make right. fun of him. He's tweeting and he's having drinks with various disreputable, genuinely disreputable characters. But he is involved in the plot, right? He right. is acting in a way as Putin's agent. He's meeting with pro-Putin people in Ukraine to disrupt, to undercut the current Ukrainian government and to create this fictitious narrative of something or other about the Obama administration and, Bill, and Joe Biden. And Bill. And he said, he said in a tweet yesterday, I believe Biden said, and remember, he was talking about phone calls to the White House and OMB. So I called them all the time. I'm the president's lawyer. He is the president's lawyer. It's not that he was the president's lawyer and now he's over there doing some random things. So far as we know, unless the Correct. unless President Trump has said he isn't, he's the president's right. lawyer. And he's also there Bill, representing the president of the United States in Ukraine. It's pretty unbelievable. He's also a former prosecutor who still knows how wiretaps work. He knows he's under investigation. Uh, if he wants to talk to these witnesses for the purposes of the criminal investigation or the impeachment probe, uh, he knows that calling them up is likely to be giving the goods back to SDNY. Uh, does that speak to also what, what may be a little bit of a nervousness in having to go do in-person meetings in Ukraine? Yeah, I hadn't thought of that, actually, the, the wiretap issue. But yeah, it does suggest that they are worried, right? He needs to get people over there to either manufacture some evidence or create excuses for what he has done, I suppose, and what the president has done. But I do think this is a case where the facts are clear. They need to keep it simple and clear in terms of the impeachment articles. And I think this and, and Chairman Schiff are determined to do that. I think the obstruction of justice and the obstruction of Congress are very strong articles as well. Yeah. Uh, you can uh, almost right. as a matter of constitutional, not just law, but constitutional practice and upholding the Constitution, resisting the House, uh, not providing material to the House when it's explicitly an impeachment inquiry is really unbelievable. And there's a long tradition that on this, the yeah. House has to get the material. And this is the how House's- did, How can they decide whether to impeach 100%. or not? 100%. This is the House's right. greatest power. They're at their, they're at their, their highest point. Point. Congressman, take a listen to uh, the Republican perspective here, new uh, from Congressman Scalise going after Pelosi. And there are still no facts to impeach 
uh, but they're going to do it anyway. And I think the biggest disappointment in all of this is what's not getting done. And, and I think that's really why you're starting to see, uh, you know, today Pelosi just unraveling, uh, yelling at reporters. Congressman. That's how they talk about women. You know, if it was a, a man talking to a reporter that way and the president uh, does that uh, often, uh, they would never characterize it that way. She was asked uh, an unfair question and she gave a serious uh, response. Uh, but I, I also let me, well, you know, I'll let you continue. Yeah. Uh, no, no, go ahead. Since no. you make that point, let's show it so folks can no. see that it was a pretty strong exchange with a conservative reporter, a veteran of Fox News, right after uh, the announcement of that impeachment plan. Do you hate the president, Madam Speaker? Because I don't, I don't hate anybody. Representative I don't Collins, hate the president. Ms. I, 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 
Yeah, well, look, Nancy Pelosi knows that not only in Congress, but the country, you know, there, there's an appetite for impeachment, but you can't just sort of fill the plate, right? You're going to have to get something that people can eat in small pieces that they can understand, that they can take back to their constituents and explain when 2020 comes around. So it makes sense that she's somewhat narrow casting it right now. But here's the other issue. The only reason that Ukraine matters it's because of Mueller. It's because of previous things that the president said. This is this this in basketball. We would almost be calling this a makeup call. You're not getting this technical foul for what you just did. It's for the five other guys that you kicked. If Donald Trump hadn't engaged in such consistent and brazen behavior, if he weren't still doing things like having Rudy Giuliani literally over there, we, we, we just accused you of being in a cookie jar and the guys over there with chips ahoy in the Ukraine right now. If the president wasn't continuing to engage in this behavior, we wouldn't even have Ukraine. So the idea of focusing specifically on this particular behavior, keeping the money from Zelensky in order to affect 2020, but saying that this is the end result of the Mueller report and several other things that they've done, that actually makes a lot of sense for Congress. It's yeah. something that people can understand. That, it's striking and very interesting to hear both of you on that. Jason Johnson, uh, our gratitude is always built. Stick around. I think you know why. And it's a reason for a lot of people to stick around. Uh